Hello everybody, and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online news video with me, Sherman. Today guys, we're going to be taking a look at update 22 that comes with the Elsewhere patch, and what it brings to the game, and the changes and stuff, and a lot of it is really good, some of it is eh, but we'll get to that. So let's get started. Starting with the base game updates, Guild Finder, new tool being added to the game for guilds to help people find the type of guild they want to join. It's really cool. Guild leaders can now have the ability to list their guild within the Guild Finder, a new tool for connecting players to like-minded guilds. This is a great tool. I, I hope people take advantage of it because I think it's going to be really good for the community to help people find the kind of people they want to play with and hang out with. So a new section is present within the guild menu for recruitment. Here, a guild leader can fill out information about their guild, as well as include custom headline and a guild description. Once they've provided enough information, they can then list their guild in the guild finder. Other players within the guild will be able to see their guild's listing while it is active as well. If you're looking for a guild, you can now access the guild finder within the guild's menu, located below <coughs> the list of any guilds you may be currently in. From here, you can browse from, by multiple different types of guilds and filter down potential matches by several additional criteria. Once you've found a guild that looks like a fit, you can send an application to that guild that includes some base information about your character and, and account, as well as the option to include a custom message. Members of a guild within the Manage Application Permission will be able to view and respond to applications Accepting an application adds the player to your guild, and declining it removes their application. New guild features. In addition to the guild finder, you're, we've added an additional, a few additional guild-related features as well. Pending invitations to a guild are now at the bottom of the guild roster, where they can be canceled if desired. The member count of your guild has been updated to reflect the fact that pending invitations to a guild count against guild member limit. Pending invites previously would get silently deleted from when a new invite was sent out and the guild was at the limit. Now you have the control over which pending invite to remove when you need space. I really like that. Added the ability to blacklist accounts from your guild. That is even better. <laughs> A blacklisted player will not be able to join the guild with while blacklisted. A new permission has been added called black, uh, Manage Blacklist, which allows a rank to view and edit the blacklist. This is located within the new Recruitment tab. Now, the reason I like this is because you're always going to have problems with certain people. It's just a given factor. And it's not that you're trying to be rude. It just gives you that ability to be like, look, I just don't want to deal with them. Block. It's that simple. So I get it. PvP artifact weapons. Volunteer, uh, Volundrug Chung, <clears throat> has been unleashed on the Cyrodiil in all campaigns. After picking up the weapon, your ability bar will swap out. Stats will be adjusted and you'll be living the living embodiment of this ancient weapon. The artifact can be wielded by any player in the Cyrodiil and spawns in the world about four to five times a day. You must keep feeding the weapon alliance points or players. <laughs> Repairing structures and resurrecting other players doesn't count, or else the power of the weapon will drain your life. It kills your character. That's an interesting concept. I like it, though. Added the tutorial for the weapon, led by Sheo Gorath, in each Alliance starter gate where quest boards are located. Near Cyr New Cyrodiil campaign adjustments. Now, this is one where I can get why people are upset, but I want to point out my perspective of what the devs are doing and why they did it. <coughs> A lot of people took advantage of the unlocked CPs or campaigns, and what they would do is they would balance, they would they would change the tide of the campaign by playing that faction. So like the winning faction, they would just go and jump on there and they would make sure that they had the winning faction as their thing, and they would take advantage of this to cheat the system so that they could get rewards or get rewarded for the 30 campaign. 40, 30 day campaign just for the reward. That's not how I see the system working and I'm pretty sure that's how the devs don't want it to work and that's why they implemented this new locked campaign system is to reduce people basically cheating the system because it was never intended to be done that way. 
And they were just trying to find the right way to, to implement that. So just pointing that out, you can reflect upon it however you want, but that's probably the best description I can come up of why they would do this. All right. All currently existing campaigns have been shut down and have been have you have received one free campaign home selection. We hope you enjoyed your time and Vivek, Shore, Sofa, Seal, and Kine. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. In keeping with the season of the dragon, we will be introducing six new campaigns with some new rules added. Um, not even going to try and pronounce some of these because they're dragon names. They like to really mess with me. <laughs> 30 day no CP and and alliance locked 30 day cp enabled and alliance locked seven day cp enabled levels 40 uh, 10 to 49 imperial city no cp imperial city cp enabled so gonna read the rest of this stuff and i'm gonna kind of you guys will see what i was talking about when i said the, why the devs made these changes i get it and i i understand some people don't and they don't like it but you got to understand when people take advantage of something and they cheat the system in its way it's designed, the devs have to do something to fix that issue. And that's all they did here. Do I agree with it? No. Do I think that it was the right choice? Probably. Because they're the ones who make that decision, not us. So, Alliance Lock campaigns are new style of campaign rules that's only being applied to 30 day durations. In these campaigns, each account will only be able to participate with with and represent a single alliance for the duration of that campaign so whatever character you go in there for and you choose it, your home campaign it's going to lock you to that faction only so if you go in with a ebonheart pact character you can only play ebonheart pact characters in that campaign you can play any of your other characters in any of the other campaigns but it's the 30 cam day campaigns that have the leaderboards and everything else applied to them so so these, there are two methods of locking in your alliance for a campaign. In both cases, alliance selection is determined by the alliance of the character you are currently logged in with. Method one, assign a home campaign to an alliance war menu. Method two, enter Cyrodiil on a campaign you've not previously joined. Once you've locked it in your alliance, only characters of the same alliance on your account will be allowed to enter Cyrodiil in that campaign this applies only to the 30 day the 30 day ones the no cp and the cp enabled there is no option to change your locked alliance until the campaign duration has elapsed multiple in-game notifications have been added to warn you when you're about to join a alliance locked campaign campaigns not flagged with the alliance locked rule set remain in change any character above level 10 from the alliance can play in those campaigns at any time Imperial City is now its own campaign. The doors in the Imperial City have been shut down, or the doors in Cyrodiil have been shut down to get into the Imperial City. You simply use, <coughs> sorry, simply use this campaign selection menu. You'll end up in the sewers just as you had entered from Cyrodiil. Note the Imperial City now has its own population cap, including the sewers and districts, which is now removed from Cyrodiil's population cap. This is to fix the lag issues that people were having. At least they hope it does. There is no guarantee it will. We'll have to try, try it and find out. Remove the guest campaign as a status, so you no longer need to manage your guest campaigns, and you are now free to play in any campaign at will, except for the locked campaigns. Home campaign status is still needed to for earning leaderboards, rewards at the end of the campaign, and participating in, in emperorship leaderboards. Emperor leaderboards will <coughs> have also been adjusted once you have served as emperor in a campaign. You cannot be crowned as an emperor for a different alliance for the rest of the campaign duration. So that means you can only be a, assigned emperor once per campaign. So like every 30 days. Unless you're doing the seven day campaign. And I don't think the leaderboards apply to that. So. <clears throat> All right. Reworked item sets. In this update, you'll find that we've reworked several existing item sets in the theme of necromancy. And they did a fantastic job with these changes to some of these sets. 
some got better adjustments than others. That's not a lie, but I do think they did a fantastic job with what they did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's start with the withered hand. Old five piece. When you when an enemy within twenty eight meters dies, heal for one thousand two hundred and ninety health and gain one thousand two hundred ninety magic. This effect is going to occur once every three seconds, and this was a really powerful set if you knew how to take advantage of it. It was a very powerful set. The change, though, is going to make it still just as powerful, but but less ad advantageous, less, less ability for you to take advantage of it. So now, when an enemy you recently damaged dies, you heal for 1450 health and gain 1450 magicka. This effect is going to occur once every three seconds. So that's really good. <clears throat> and I like that change because it's any time you recently damaged, uh, an enemy you recently damaged dies, that it happens. I don't know how long that time frame is because it doesn't say, but I'm hoping it's a few seconds from the time you deal damage to them. Like if you're using a lot of AOEs and things like that, if you're dealing damage to them, uh, this resource return is really good. Vestments of the Warlock, Light Armor. When you fall above, uh, below 33% magic or restore 9,000 magic, this effect is going to occur once every minute. The new change, when you fall below 25% magic or restore 11,350 magic, this effect can occur once every 45 seconds. The way I see this set, and I know a lot of people don't like this set because it's, it is kind of a crap set, we won't lie. But I see it as this. This is one of those sets to help somebody who's struggling or has issues with resource management it gives them that 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 basically oh crap button like oh man I'm, I'm screwing up i'm burning through my magica boom i've got magic back i need to learn to manage it better that's the way i see this set and it's it's really effective if you look at it from that perspective <clears throat> essence thief old version when you deal damage with a light attack you have a 15 percent chance to draw essence from an enemy collecting their essence heals you for 4300 health and 40 restores 4300 stamina and increases your damage by 12 percent for 10 seconds the essence lasts for 10 seconds now the new change when you deal damage with the light attack you draw essence from the enemy collecting the essence heals you for 3900 health restores 3900 stamina and increases your damage by 10 percent for 10 seconds essence lasts five seconds and spawns closer to your target. So when you hit when you hit an enemy with a light attack, it's going to spawn an essence ball like thing that you can collect, and it's going to give you health and stamina back. This is a great tool for managing resources, and I really like the way they made the change to it because now it's no longer a 15% chance; it's always going to happen. So I think that that really reflects that idea of that necromancer theme. Trappings of invigoration medium. When you fall below 30... Yeah, it's the same as this one, guys. It's the Vestments of the Warlock. Interesting change, again, but an oh-crap button. That's all it is. <clears throat> all right, moving on. Leeching Plate. Used to be four-piece four healing taken. Five-piece was when you take damage, you have an 8% chance to summon a cloud of healing poison or leeching poison under the assailant. Yada, yada, yada. It was a, it was a good set. Had a crappy chance of applying. But it was a really good set. Number The new change, though, now adds health, which is going to make you have more survivability. And then when you take damage, you have a 20% chance to summon a cloud of leeching poison under the assailant. The cloud deals 1,200 damage in a 5-meter radius, so it gets a 1-meter radius increase every second for 5 seconds, and it heals you for 100% of the damage cost. This change is excellent to this set. I love this change. I think that it works out a lot better. And I can't wait to get a hold of this because there is a couple characters I wouldn't mind using it on or a couple ideas for characters I wouldn't mind using it on. Affliction. Heavy armor. Now this this is a Cyrodiil set. A lot of people didn't see its purpose. I actually did and I tried using it several times but I kept getting told it was a useless set. But I can see why they said that. Now I see a better reason for it. This is really really an interesting change. So first they changed the, the, the fact that it added Max Magicka. See, it did Health, Stamina, and Magicka before. Now it's going to do Health, Stamina, Stamina Recovery. And then when you deal damage, you have a 
50% chance to deal an additional 1830 disease damage and afflict your target with minor defile for four seconds, reducing their healing received by 15%. This effect can occur once every four seconds. I know a lot of people are going to say, but that's a really stupid set. Nobody's going to really use it. And I see a great combination with this set that complements another set. Night Mother's Gaze and this set are going to complement each other really well, both on a Necro and on a, uh, and on a, on a uh, Nightblade. Because they both can take advantage of the two factors here, of two different factors. One, they're both disease-orientated classes. They have a lot of disease damage abilities and physical damage abilities. So they can take advantage of that disease damage option and really boost their capabilities with it through CP and the fact that they're using Night Mothers to do Major Fracture. When you use, major, when you use Night Mothers Gaze, it applies Major Fracture to multiple targets, not just one, a lot of targets. So it's a really good set to use in combination with this because this is gonna allow that disease damage to do more damage, more effectively. And with the fact that it can go off every four seconds is gonna be fantastic with that combination because you'll be able to keep Major Fracture up all the time by dealing critical damage and then this. A great tool to use with it would be Veladrits because that does even more disease damage. So you have these three tools all working in conjunction with each other. I, I just love that com that the fact that they made it to where you can combo those sets really well. All right, next up, ESO Logs. Added the ability for you to perform a deep dive into log combat events within your group to see things like damage, healing, resource usage, and much more. This is done by exporting group-based encounter logs to a local file, which gets uploaded to the ESO Logs website. For more information about this feature, please visit, uh, please see this forum post. This is a really, really good tool for people who focus on doing trials and doing them as best as possible. Okay, so for the in-game community, this is a great tool, and they will take advantage of it. And I'm glad that they put this tool in here for them. It helps them figure out their weakest links and how to how to help them improve their ability to play it, it's just a really good tool for that for somebody like me who's a role player it's useless so it's a really good tool though if you want to use it sky started achievements and alternative uh, alternate for uh, alternate characters and so this is a gray area for the pay to win aspect a lot of people um brought up but somebody pointed out a really interesting thing and, and it makes a lot more sense. So fully completing a Sky Shard Hunter achievement on one character will now unlock this ability to purchase the achievement on other characters. This purchase achievement will award all associated skill points or any remaining skill points that your current character has not yet achieved or not yet acquired. Please note you must log into each character on your account to register your achievements. Once you have logged into each character, your characters will be able to purchase eligible Sky Shard upgrades. The new Crown Store offering is located under Upgrade Sky Shards in the Crown Store. Now, I saw this as a gray area because I was looking at it from the perspective of, oh, this is pay to win, instead of saying, wow, this is just pay, pay to advance, okay? Because I don't know how many of you play through the content just to get Sky Shards and just to get skill points. There is a lot of content you have to play through to do this. And it takes a very long time. In fact, for some people, it, take, it can take a couple of years because of their, their, how often they can play. Now, those people can pay to advance their characters to get those skill points without having to play that content if they don't want to. And that's what it's there for. And I get it, it's a really good tool. I love this idea. Especially the more content they add, the more Sky Shards that get added, geez. Like, I, I, I think most of my characters have barely scratched the surface of getting all Sky Shards, because it takes so long. Clockwork City, crafting and economy. Torn cloth resources nodes in the Clockwork City zone are now easier to see. They fixed some stuff with the Asylum Sanctorium Trial, St. Felms. Um, projections will now correctly despawn when you leave the encounter space. Increase the time between the uses of St. Felm's Teleport Strike ability. St. Ohm's Ordinator pro Protectors now spawn from different locations. The maximum amount of ordinator, ordinated 
protectors that can be active at any given time is now three as, ori as originally intended. Dragon Bones, group content stuff. This is the dungeons. Scale Color Peak, Matriarch Aelids. Your character will no longer take damage from frigid waters when you are not, in fact, in the water. Matriarch Aelids is now much more uh, vigilant against those who try to circumvent her li Limeneids during this encounter. So they did a fix on that. That's a really good fix. I like that change. It should make it a little bit more challenging, even in normal mode, but at the same time, like, it, doable. Dungeons and group content fixed an issue where the players between, and this is Horns of the Reach, fixed an issue where a player between levels 45 and 49 using the Dungeon Finder would not be allowed to enter Falkreath Hold. Good fix. Imperial City fixes DLC pack gameplay, combat and gameplay. Adjusted the health and damage of monsters in the CP enabled Imperial City campaigns. Expect the Denzians of the sewers in the districts to hit harder and be tougher overall. That's because you have CP enabled. Treasure scams now spawn more frequently and adjusting the path of various treasure scams so they will no longer disappear when moving out from point to point. Good changes. Morrowind, Trials, Halls of Fabrication. The Arch Custodian will no longer hate anyone <laughs> not in its encounter space. Ruined Factotums uh, can no longer be damaged while still spawning in, in during the fight with the reasonably com uh, reasonable committee. Okay. Haunted Grounds. Far Farwin is no longer in a properly multi-legal. <laughs> okay. Merkmeyer. I'm not going to read through all these guys. If you guys want to read these, I'll put a link in the description so you can read these for yourselves. Orsidium, Somerset, some changes, Thieves Guild, Wraithstone, Combat and Gameplay. Lots of changes here. I'm not going to go through a lot of this stuff up here. Let's just say there was a lot of changes to some of this stuff. Let's just go ahead and jump on down here to the buffs and, de and debuffs. We're going to start here. We're going to work our way through all the class changes. So, fixed an issue where the health recovery reduction of major and minor to file were, were be considered an additional negative effect on purge abilities that could only remove a limited amount of effects. Now it can remove this as well more effectively. Fixed an issue where the poison side effects uh, where it was it was using the incorrect missing of stats to derive its damage. Now like all other status effects it will now it will use casters, highest weapon and spell damage, max stamina or magicka, and weapon and spell critical chance. So, that's good. Dragon Knight. First change. Ardent Flame. Dragon Knight Standard. The rock texture is now better aligned with the broken ground textures from these abilities. They increase the duration of this ability of the standard of might and the standard of might morph to 16 seconds at all ranks. Dragon Knight standard is will now rank up by in 1.1% damage per rank. Fixed an issue where these abilities were being considered direct damage rather than damage over time. Shifting standard. They fixed an issue where this ability was being removed before doing its final tick. And so good changes there overall, I think. Um, there was a lot of testing done with this. I know a lot of people tested this. I, I didn't myself because I was focused more on the Necromancer this update, but I did try a lot of different things with different classes towards the end because I was trying a lot of different stuff and I found some really cool things out and just went crazy. Um, but I did not get a chance to test this, but it sounds like a good change. Fiery Breath. Increase the damage of the initial hit of this ability by 200% to be on par with our PBAOE standards. This ability will now rank up in damage for the entire ability rather than just the dot. Okay. So a PB AoE is a an AoE. Okay. And what they did was they went through all the skills in the game and adjusted the AoEs, the, the different things and their meanings and how they work so that they all reflect something similar. So... Fiery Grip, new change. Increase the damage of this building is worse by 20% to put it on par with other with our gap closer standards. They improved the responsiveness of the pull speed from this ability to reduce situation where players were still CC'd after the pull was complete. Inferno, this ability and its morphs now operate like a flame like the flames of oblivion morph. 
where they will scale with your highest offensive stat and inc also increase the power of these abilities by 5%. Flames of, of Oblivion Morph. This morph no longer exclusively adds dynamic scaling mechanism. Instead, the morph retains the gaining of major savagery and hits one additional enemy. Lava Whip. Reduce the cost of this ability and its morphs by 5% to put it on par with other melee spammables. Molten Whip. Rework this ability so it is no longer it no longer grants a passive bonus to weapon and spell damage while slotted. Instead, this passive grants access to Seething Fury, a 33% damage bonus to your next Molten Whip cast, and increase of 125 weapon and spell damage every time you activate an Ardent Flame ability that isn't Molten Whip. This bonus can stack up to three times, last five seconds, and will refresh in duration every time it is applied to you. Searing Strike adjusted this ability in its morphs to follow the standardized damage over time rule set, decreased the total duration to 8 seconds from 8.5, and increased the damage per tick by approximately 12.5 to make up for the loss of the first tick. This will result in a roughly the same overall DPS, but with less burst damage. Draconic Powers, Coagulated Blood. They increase the heal of this morph by approximately 19% to better fit in line with other burst heal abilities. Dark Talon increased the damage of the initial hit of this ability in its morphs by 25% to put it on par with our other POB or PBAOE abilities. Burning Talons adjusted the tick frequency duration and delay so that this ability followed our standard duration remains at 4 seconds with a 1 second delay to the dot and the initial hit but now ticks 4 times instead of 3. Dragon Leap. Increase the radius of this ability in its morph to 8 meters from 6.5. It also now applies more aggressive snare to targets. It is cast on to prevent them from being able to outrun the AoE damage when it lands. Hardened Armor. The damage shield granted from this ability will no longer extend in duration as the ability ranks up, but rather will increase by 1.1%. In size per rank, adjusted the tooltip to state the value of the shield rather than the percentage of health it was based off for improved clarity. I'm glad they did that change. It makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Inhale. Increase the damage of the initial hit of this ability in sports by approximately 25%. Increase the damage of the delayed explosion by approximately 7%. This was done to adhere to the ability uh, to our AoE standards. Note that the initial hit of this ability is half of the AoE standard because it heals for 100% of the damage caused, which makes it to this that standard. Removes the six target cap for the heal interrupt and resource restore for the ability. Note this puts the ability in, into the rule breaker category. So the rule breaker category basically means that this they know the skill is broken, but it is broken for a reason because they designed it to work a certain way and they're just letting people know that it fits that that category it's and they're they're probably going to adjust it later who knows we'll see reflective scale rename this ability to protective scale convert the re reflect function into a 50 percent damage pr reduction from projectiles this will ha happen to all three ver versions of this ability dragon fire scale this ability no longer increases damage of reflected attack since it can no longer reflect incoming projectiles will now cause you to launch a fiery orb at the attacker that deals fire damage or flame damage. This effect can occur once every half second. So if you've got ticking damage on you from um, a reflected attack, then you can actually reflect those back. It's really kind of nice. Reflective plate, rename this ability to protective plate. No other changes were made to the ability's functionality. Earth and Heart changes. Ash Cloud. Increase the healing of this ability by approximately 15%. That is epic. Eruption. They adjusted the, this ability to follow the standardized damage over time rule set. Added a one second delay between the initial hit and the first damage over time tick. And increased the damage per tick by approximately 9% to make up for the loss of the first tick. Also increased the damage of initial hit by approximately 35%. Cinder Storm. They increased the healing of this ability by approximately 4%. So this thing, they, they did a massive overhaul to this. And I think that that's a really good, I think it's a really good change. I will find out because I do play a two Dragon Knight characters. So Earth and Heart adjusted the duration of these skills 
so that their final ranks land on integers rather than tr fractures, uh, fractions Sorry, when they have rank 2 of Eternal Mountain. This has resulted in the following duration changes. Magma armor and morphs increased to 12 seconds from 10.5 se uh, 10.8 seconds. Molten weapon and morphs previously 39.6 seconds adjusted so igneous weapons is now 42 seconds and molten armaments is 36 seconds. Obsidian shield and morphs increased to 8 seconds from 7.2. Petrified petrify and morphs, ash cloud and morphs no change. Stone Fist and Morphs decreased to 3 seconds from 3.6 seconds. Obsidian Shield. Fixed an issue where this ability and the Igneous Shield Morph were increased by 1 per level rather than 1.1% per level. Igneous Shield fixed an issue where this ability was not increasing in size for the caster. Nightblade changes. Assassination. Blur. Double take. Renamed and reworked this morph. Renamed this morph to Fa Phantasmal Escape. This morph no longer grants major expedition for 4 seconds. Instead, it grants immunity to snare and immobilizes for 2.5 to 4 seconds based on the rank. The morph no longer becomes cheaper as the ability ranks up. Deathstroke. This ability and, and the incapacitating strike morph no longer apply major defile to the target. Incapacitating strike morph. This morph will now silence enemies for 3 seconds if cast within 120 or more ultimate, the silence can be CC broken and will fail to apply CC immune enemies. Grim Focus. Remove the minor berserk buff from this ability in its morphs. The spectral bow now heals for 33% of the damage dealt if you are within 7 meters of the target when firing it. Fixed an issue where this ability in its worst would continue to persist after logging off. Reduce the minimum travel time in this ability in its worst to 250 milliseconds from 450 milliseconds. This ability and its morphs will now reduce the damage taken by 3% for each light attack and heavy attack for you uh, use up to 5 times, so 15% damage reduction. Note that this bonus will persist even if Grim Focus buff fades from you, as it is tethered to the amount of stacks you have while the buff was active. The effect is will be consumed when you use your stacks by firing the spectral bow or when you leave combat. Merciless Resolve now increases healing done by 50%. Relentless Focus increased the duration to 30 seconds from 20 seconds. Additionally, this morph no longer grants minor endurance. Lotus Fan increase the damage the dot applies from this ability by approximately 175% to put it on par with our dot standards. Note this was in last week's PTS patch, but was missing from the patch notes. Mark target. Remove this, the cost from this ability in its morphs. This was done to make it more comparable to abilities such as weakness of to elements and other uh, that only apply a debuff to their target. Teleport strike. This ability in its morphs will no longer stun NPCs. Instead, targets affected by the initial hit will be afflicted with minor vulnerability for 8 seconds. Note that minor vulnerability will apply to both players and NPCs. Shadow Tree. Aspect of Terror. This ability and source no longer snare the target after the fear ends. Aspect of Terror now fears up to three targets, up from two. Mass Hysteria. This morph no longer applies minor main to the targets affected. Also increase the number of targets feared to six from two. Dark Cloud. Or Dark Cloak, sorry. Adjusted how this ability operates. It will now heal the caster for 6% of their max health every 1 second, and duration can increase to the maximum of 8 seconds with other passives. The tooltip will now state the value you, you will heal for, rather than how it scales to prevent confusion. Fixed an issue where this ability had cost reduction for the rank up prog progression, rather than increasing the morph's operation of the healing. This will result in an increase of approximately 7%, but... The, but a healing value increased by approximately 3%. Fixed an issue where the minor protection granted for this ability was additive rather than multiplicative. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Dark Veil. Adjusted the, this passive to grant a flat 1 and 2 second duration increase to shadow abilities rather than an 8 to 15% duration extensions. 
The duration of these abilities before allocating this passive have been adjusted to ensure total duration remains relative to the same to the current level live values. Summon Shade. This ability now scales out the caster's max magicka and spell damage or stamina and weapon damage. This is cool. The shades will now attack every 2 seconds rather than every 1.5 seconds. Rename the attacks. The shades deal with each morph to help improve clarity. Fixed an issue where these abilities do not increase the damage as they rank up. Dark Shade. This ability now deals 50% more damage as part of the morph functionality. The AoE attack the cast, it cast happens 5% more frequently than before and deals 20% more damage than the default attack. Surprise Attack. This ability no longer applies major fracture. Instead, if you use this ability on the flank of an enemy, behind or at the sides, you reduce their physical resistance by 5%. This effect cannot stack, but will always prioritize the highest value. Vela Blades. Fixed an issue where this ability was not getting stronger as the ability ranked up. Total damage of rank 4 will be increased by 6.6%. Siphoning, Cripple, adjusted this ability and debilitate morph to follow our standardized damage over time rule set, increased the total duration to 10 seconds from 8 seconds, increased the damage per tick by approximately 4%, and this will result in roughly the same overall DPS but over a longer duration. Reduce the snail, snare potency to 30% from 40%, that, that's, that's the part that irritates me. This ability and its worst no longer grant the caster major expedition. This ability can now be placed on an infinite amount of targets. That's the good part. Gripping, cra uh, grip, crippling grasp. Add a two second delay between the first damage tick over time and the initial hit. Also increase the dam damage of the initial hit by approximately 25%. Increase the damage of each dot tick by approximately 25% to make up for the damage loss of the first tick. Debilitate. Increase the snare potency to 50%. This morph will also no longer refund the magic cost if the target dies while it is active. Instead, it applies minor magic of steel to the enemy while the dot persists. That is really cool. I love that they made that change. I love using Debilitate on my, my uh, Nightblade, so I think that'll be really good. <coughs> Sorry. Drain Power. Increase the damage of this ability in Sap Essence Morph by 25% to adhere to the to our PB AoE damage standards. Ability in Sap Essence now grant major sorcery rather than brutality to better represent the scaling mechanisms of the skill use. Fixed an issue where this ability in its morphs could unintentionally be dodged. Power Extraction Morph increase the damage of this ability by 20%. This ability continues to grant major brutality. Right, Siphoning Strikes. Fixed an issue where this ability in its morphs had a cooldown on the heal. Since light and heavy attacks already have their own unique cooldowns, this previous interaction meant if you had a set such as Blood Moon, you were not gaining the full efficiency of the bonus. Soul Shred increased the radius of this ability in its Soul Tether morph to 8 meters from 6. Soul Tether adjusted the morph to adhere to our DOT standards. Added a one second delay between the initial hit and the first dot tick. Increased the damage by approximately 4% per tick. This will result in high DPS HPS, but with least, less burst. Fixed an issue where these abilities did not get stronger as they ranked up. The initial hit and the dot will both gain 1.1% damage per, tick, per rank. There's a lot of changes to skills in this game. We got Sorcerer still. We got Templar. We got what uh warden i'm just going through real quick okay so we're almost done it just seems like it's taking forever all right so that is sorcerer dark magic crystal shard reduce the cost of this ability in this force by approximately 15 percent to put in line with our other cast time abilities reduce the minimum travel time of this to 250 from 450 that's going to make crystal shard a much better tool for for spellcasters Dark Exchange, they fixed the, ability, the, the issues where this ability in Dark Conversion Morph would fall to fail to return resources or heal if they were cast while silenced. 
Encased, reduce the ration of the mobilized from this ability and its morphs to 4 seconds from 4.5 seconds. Shattering Prison, increase the damage of the explosion by approximately 82% to put it on par with the AoE instant hit abilities such as Cleave or Impulse. Negate Magic, fixed an issue where this ability would fail to continue suppressing area effect abilities inside of the area. Updated the tooltip to better describe the function of, of this ultimate. Daedric Summoning, Daedric Curse, fixed an issue where the AoE detonation of this ability and its morphs could be blocked. Note that this refers to the AoE portion of the ability as the original target cannot block the damage. Daedric Prey, rework the, rank, the ability rank up of this ability. Instead of gaining a 1.1% damage on the explosion per rank, this ability becomes cheaper as it ranks up. The final cost is 2,160 down from 2430, but it will deal 3.3% less damage overall. Added a pet taunt functionality to this ability that is similar to the one built into heavy attacks. Your active pets will now prioritize targets with Daedric Prey on them. Fixed an issue where summon unstable familiar damage pulse was not being affected by this ability. Note that the morphed version volatile familiar will already uh, was already working properly. Hardened Ward fixed an issue where this ability was getting 40% bonus to strength rather than the 20% bonus. Please note that the previous bonus could not be circumvented by the health cap of 50%. So if you were already over the bonus, you will see no change to power. <coughs> All right. Sorry. Storm Calling, Bolt Escape, fixed an issue where this ability and its morphs could stun targets behind walls. This ability, Streak, this ability will now scale off with your highest offensive stat instead of stun duration to 3 seconds from 1.8 seconds. Oh, and increase. So this you can use both Stamina or Magicka with. That's cool. Lightning Form, Boundless Storm. This morph now grants 4 seconds of major expedition immediately rather than starting at 2.5 seconds and raking up to this ability progression. The ability's damage will now get 1.1% per tick, ending at 3.3% increase at rank 4. Lightning Splash. Increase the duration of this ability and its worth to 8 seconds from 6 seconds. Liquid Lightning. This morph now lasts 12 seconds to retain the extra 4 seconds of duration. Increase Lightning Flood. Increase the damage of this morph by 5%. That's actually kind of nice. I like Lightning Flood. It's got a bigger area of effect. Mage's Wraith. Increase the damage of the area effect, of it, <coughs> area effect damage of this ability and its source by 20% to put it on par with other executes. Fixed an issue where this ability's detonation was able to be dodged despite the initial hit also being able to be dodged. If the initial hit lands on the target, they will not be able to dodge the detonation. And <coughs> Endless Fury. This ability now returns magic if the target dies within 5 seconds of damage taken rather than only if the ability gained a, the killing blow. Also increase the amount of magic return by approximately 10%. Overload. This ability and its morphs will now properly scale off Staff Expert in the Champion Point system. Also updated the tooltip from this ability and its morphs to better describe functionality. Power Overload. Increase the damage dealt of light and heavy attacks attack override by 10% to improve the morph uh, distinction. Summon Storm Atronach fixed an issue where this ability and its morphs would not stun and deal damage to targets in the area where you cast the ability. Templar Changes. Adric Spear. Burning Light. Fixed an issue where the damage of this passive was able to be dodged despite the fact that the damage was tethered to an attack that already could be blocked or dodged. Focus Charge. Reduce the damage dealt by this ability and toppling charge morph by approximately 8% to put it on par with other gap closer abilities. Explosive Charge. Increase the damage dealt from this morph by approximately 15% to put it on par with other with our PB AoE ability standard since the morph converts the attack into an AoE. Toppling Charge. Fix the nature where this ability and explosive charge morph could not be CC broken until the staggering com the stagger completed if you were interrupted by the, the ability. This ability and its morphs will no now always apply off balance to the target rather than requiring them to be interrupted since targets were automatically set off balance if interrupted anyways. Piercing Javelin. Increase the duration of the stun granted from this ability and its morphs to land on a beautiful whole number. This means that the ability 
and the Aurora Javelin will now stun for 2 seconds rather than 1.8. While binding, javelin, while binding Javelin will last 4 seconds rather than 3.5. Aurora Javelin fixed an issue where you couldn't hit the damage bonus cap while utilizing ranged increased passives. Now it will get 2% stronger for every 1 meter you are uh, between, sorry, 1 meter between you and the target up to 40% at 20 meters. Puncturing Strikes reduced the channel time of this ability and force to 1 second from 1.1 seconds. Praise the sun for whole numbers, or praise the sun. Radiant sweep reduce the ability, the, the radius of this ability is worth to eight meters from six meters, or increased it. Empowering sweep redesigned this morph to offer damage rather than survivability. The damage pulse from this initial hit will la now last six seconds at base, but is increased by two seconds for each enemy hit, up to a maximum of six enemies. It also grants empower for the duration rather than magic uh, major protection. Spear shards increase the initial hit damage of this ability and its morphs by approximately thirty six percent. Increase the dot of this ability and luminous shards morph by approximately five percent. Adjusted how these abilities power up as they increase in rank. Spear shards increase damage dealt by entire ability as it ranks up. Luminous shards no longer increases damage as it ranks up, but instead gains cost reduction. Blazing Spear increases damage dealt by entire ability as it ranks up. Sun Shield updated the tooltip and the morphs to state the accurate value rather than the ambiguous value uh, that required you to do super hard math. Increased the additional hit damage of this ability in a Radiant Ward by 150% to put it on par with other. Blazing Shield damage remains untouched since it, already, it, it's, it is already above that standard since it is an additional requirement in order to gain damage. Radiant Ward. This ability no longer gains additional cost reduction as it ranks up. Instead, the bonus shield size for enemies hit goes up to 9% per enemy hit at rank 4. Dawn's Wraith is Eclipse. This ability and its worst will no longer proc off direct damage such as Spiked Armor or Thews of the Harbinger's damage return. Updated the tooltip of these abilities to properly indicate the, in the eternal co cooldown which have always been there. Reduce the damage dealt by the thorn mechanic, reduce damage return, and this ability and its morphs by 25%. Note this only pertains to the damage the heal of total dark and explosion of unstable core remain untouched. Power of the light. Adjusted this rank this ability rank up for this morph, so it no longer gains damage on the initial hit, but instead increases the duration of minor fracture and breach applied since that is its focus of the morph. This will result in approximately a 3% damage loss on the initial hit, but the duration of the minor fr fracture and minor breach will last 9 seconds up from 6 at their final rank. That is a cool change. I'm happy for that. Solar Flare. Reduce the cast time of this ability to dark, dark flare morph to 1 second up from 1.1 second. Increase the travel speed to match other projectiles. Reduce the damage by approximately 37% to make up for the fact that it can be more frequently. Reduce the cost from 2970 or to 2970 from 3240. And Solar Barrage, remove the delay of this ability which will result in gaining one extra tick of damage. Also fix an issue where this ability was being considered a direct damage attack instead of a damage over time. Sunfire adjusted this ability and its morphs to follow the standardized damage over time rule set. Total duration of this ability increased to 8 seconds from 6.25 and increased the damage per tick by approximately 31% to make up for the loss of the first tick. This will result in roughly the same overall DPS but with less burst damage. Vampire's Bane. This ability now lasts 12 seconds instead of 10.5. Reflective Light. This ability now has the the spread of how far this ability will attempt to find targets near its your initial target is now 5 meters instead of 4.5 god I couldn't even speak there restoring light breath of light fixed issue where the secondary yield granted from this ability was able to ignore the caster's line of sight and target players behind them cleansing ritual this ability in its morphs will now grant healing and damage based on the user's highest offensive stat rather than max magicka and spell damage Ritual Retribution fixed an issue where the damage from this 
This morph could not critically strike. Practice incantation fixed an issue where this ability was increasing the heal by one per tick rather than 1.1%. Repentance will now gray out and become unable to cast if there are no corpses around you. Restoring aura, remove the cost from this ability and the radiant aura morph and increase the duration to 20 seconds at max rank. This was done to put it in the same category as other abilities such as weakness to elements. All right. Warden, Animal Companions, Falcon Swiftness. Reduce the cost of this ability and source to 2,700 from 3,511 at base. This ability no longer grants Major Endurance. Major Expedition now lasts 6 seconds up from 4. Note that this ability is now considered a Rule Breaker since it breaks the paradigm, paradigm of Major Expedition lasting 4 seconds. Scorch, this ability and source now can, can now be blocked. Yeah. <clears throat> that sucks. Green balance, corrupting pollen. This this ability no longer applies major defile to enemies for four seconds inside, which allowed it to bypass the six player target cap. Instead, up to six enemies inside will be properly affected by major defile, which will cease once the ability ends or you, they leave the area. The, they leave the radius. Harvest fixed an issue where the the synergy could not actively update to targets in the area it will no it will now operate like other synergies prioritizing the closest enemies to the center of the area of effect placed also increase the radius of the synergy prompt to five meters from three meters to allow more accessibility lotus flower increase the radius of the heel from this ability and it's worth to 28 meters up from 12 to aid in better distributing the healing, healing potential to group members. I love that change to Lotus Flower. God, this is going to make my stamina healer so much better. <clears throat> Nature's Grass. This ability and source now scale with your highest offensive stat rather than just your max magicka and spell damage. That's even good for people. Winner's Embrace. Arctic Wind. Increase the heal over time from this ability and its source to 3% of your max health up from 2%. This, the, these abilities now properly rank up in healing with each rank and their tooltips state the actual heal value. Arctic Blast. Increase the travel speed of the projectile so it's more it's so it's similar to destructive touches speed. Also updated the tooltip to state it requires an enemy to cast. Polar Wind. They increase the radius to 12 meters from 8 meters for allied heal. Cool. Crystallized Shield. Remove the cost reduction rank up from this ability in its morphs. This will now, they will now all cost 2780 at base. The size of the shield is now the, uh, from this ability will increase as the ability ranks up. Adjusted the magic return to be 22% of the ability's cost instead of previous base value. Crystallized Slab. Increase the damage return of this morph by approximately 55% to put it on par with other similar abilities such as Dragon, Fire Scale, or Inferno. Frozen Gate. This ability no longer becomes cheaper as it ranks up. The cost of the, the cost remains 2970 at all ranks rather than decreasing to 2701 on the morphs. The duration has been streamlined to 30 seconds on all morphs. The ability now ranks up in damage but has had its base damage reduced to our PBAOE standard. Attack. Rank 4 or of each morph will now reach the same damage as before. Impaling shards. Fixed an issue where this ability and its morphs were being removed from before dealing their last tick of damage. Fixed an issue where these abilities were being calculated as direct damage rather than damage over time effect. And impaling shards and gripping shards increase the damage dealt by these abilities by 30% to put them on par with AoE dots such as Winter's Revenge. Winter's Revenge fixed an issue where this morph could snare enemies through walls. Fleet Storm. Reduce the potency of the snare from this ability and its source to 40% from 70%. That sucks. Alright. Weapon changes. Two-handed. Berserking Rage. Fixed an issue where the CC immunity granted from this ability wasn't granting immunity to interrupts. Cleave. Rework this ability and its source so damage is increased by 50% but remove the bleed from this ability completely. Carve. This morph now retains the bleed 
and increased the bleed damage by 25%. However, it no longer grants minor heroism. Brawler. Removed the bleed from this ability, increased the shield granted from its morphs by 100% at base, but reduced the bonus scaling per target from 100% to 50%. This means that the base ability will be 100% stronger than before and approximately 14% stronger than previous in the, the, uh, if you get the maximum bonus. Uppercut. Reduce the damage dealt from this ability and its worth to 13, 14% to make up for the removal of the post global noted, uh, the post global removal on time noted above. This will, this will result in a 6% overall DP, DPS increase when used in quick succession. <clears throat> one handed sword and shield. Fixed an issue where one handed shield hint was appearing to be to appearing in your death recap when you weren't attempting to use one handed shield weapons. Dual wield blade cloak. They fixed an issue where this ability and its morphs were you could fail to get damage or any other bonuses provided. You will now always get the pulsing damage and the other bonuses, even if major evasion fails to apply to you during or applies, applies due to having a longer duration stuff. Fixed an issue where this abilities were being treated as both dot and direct damage. They will now properly be treated as damage over time and scale with Thaumaturge rather than Master at Arms. This means it will also no longer proc things like dealing when dealing with melee damage. Deadly Cloak. They increase the damage more by approximately 4%, so it probably gains the 50% damage compared to the other morph. Flurry. Increase the damage dealt from this ability and its morphs by approximately 21% to ensure that it is in line with other single target spammable abilities. Hidden Blade. They remove the snare from this ability and its morphs. Flying Blade. Increase the damage dealt from this morph by 10%. I, I'm not happy that they removed the snare. I really like that. Twin Slashes. Adjusted this ability and its morphs to follow the, a standard standardized damage over time rule set increase the total duration to 10, 10 seconds from 9 increase the delay to 2 seconds from 1 increase the damage per tick by approximately 15 percent to make up for the loss of the first tick this will result in roughly the same overall dps but with less burst damage blood craze increase the heal per tick by approximately 27 percent and fix the issue where this ability was being calculated with bonuses as an offensive attack rather than a heal Whirlwind. Increase the base damage of the, this more of this ability and its morphs by 50%, but remove the execute bonus. Reduce the base cost to 3510 from 3780. Increase the radius of this ability and whirling death morph to 6 meters from 5. Steel Tornado. Remove the execute bonus, but reduce the base cost to 3240 from 3510. Whirling Blades. Remove the reduce, the reduce cost and major endurance on hit and reintroduce the execute bonus to this morph. Reduce the execute threshold from this ability to 50% from 100% to order in order to reduce instances where it can it was over, outperforming single target spammable attacks. Bow, arrow spray, remove the snare from this ability and its morphs but increase the damage by approximately 27% and reduce the cost by approximately 13%. Acid spray, Increase the damage over time by approximately 40%, but added a one second delay between the initial hit and the first tick. This ability now lasts four seconds in total. Bombard. This morph retains the snare and immobilize, but enemies <coughs> ensures that both apply to the enemy rather than only rather than only snaring enemies who were initially affected by the immobilize. During the immobilization, uh, duration of the immobilization lasts up to four seconds up from two. That's a good change. I like it. Rapid fire ballista fixed an issue where the damage from this ability could cause health desyncs to occur under certain circumstances. Snipe. Reduce the cast time of this ability to one second from 1.1. Reduce the damage dealt by 25% up from the removal of the post global noted earlier. Increase the travel speed um, of the arrows to put them in line with other projectiles. Lethal arrow. This morph now applies minor defile rather than major defile. This was n done since the morph already has another bonus. The granted chance to apply the poison status effect. Focus aim. This, this morph no longer increases the range in which your allies can hit the target. Instead, it reduces the cost by 5% and increases the range by 5 meters. Note that minor fracture remains. Destruction staff. 
Wall of Frost. Reduce the snare potency of this ability and its morphs to 40% from 60%. <sighs> I, I, I get why. I don't agree. Panacea. Light's Champion. This ability no longer grants major protection in adjustment to the to this morphs. The duration of major force granted will now increase by one second for each rank of the morph to a total of going from a duration of five to a total of eight seconds at rank four unarmed heavy attack fixed an issue where heavy attacks while unarmed would not cause your pet to change targets world soul magic soul shatter fixed an issue where this the visual effects of morse explosion were multiplying in instant inst intensity based on how many enemies you hit with it <clears throat> sorry don't mean to keep coughing devour corpse uh, for werewolf corpses in the area with this ability active will now detonate a red glow similar to other corpses consuming telegraphs you can now devour your friends to extend your werewolf transformation timer since they are a selfish doggo Fixed an issue where Devourer was not showing the interruptible telegraph to enemy players. Infectious Claw increased the damage of the initial hit of this ability in its morphs by approximately 36% to put it in line with PBAOA standards. Werewolf Bleed adjusted this ability in its morphs to follow our standardized damage over time rule set. Total duration decreased to 4 seconds from 8, added a 1 second delay between the initial hit and the first tick, decreased the damage. <clears throat> per tick by approximately 15% for the base and the pack leader morph. Increase the damage per, per tick by approximately 24% for the berserker morph. These abilities can no longer refresh once you applied to a target. Guild changes. Fighter's Guild. Dawnbreaker. Increase the delay on damage over time effect to 2 seconds from 1. Total duration is now 6 rather than 5. Dawnbreaker smiting this stun from this ability no longer ranks up from 1.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Instead, it is a flat 2 seconds at all ranks. The, this morph now progressively gets stronger in damage as it ranks up instead. This will result in a 5.7% initial hit damage increase and a 9% damage over time portion increase. Silver Leash improved the responsiveness of the pole speed from this ability to reduce situations where players were still CC'd after the pole was complete. Trap Beast fixed an issue where the initial hit from this ability and its morphs could be dodged. Undead Turn Undead fixed an issue where this ability only feared werewolves it, if you had the passive skill tracker enabled. <clears throat> Psychic Order, Accelerate, increase the duration of Major Expedition from this buff to 4 seconds from 3. Channeled Acceleration will now last 12 seconds rather than 10. Race Against Time, this morph no longer reduces the cost of sprinting by 50% for 4 seconds. Instead, instead it grants immunity to snares immobilize for 4. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a drink. Lots of stuff. Elemental Weapon, fixed an issue where this wasn't an equal chance to apply each status effect. Love the change to this next ability, Men Wounds. Revamp this ability in Morse. The light and heavy attacks no longer trigger the global cooldown and can be weaved with other abilities. <coughs> Sorry. No longer costs uh, resources to light or heavy attack with this ability toggled. Light attacks now heal instantly for the same amount that a light attack would damage an enemy. Heavy attacks still channel and heals every second, but has been reduced to the same scaling of other weapon uh, heavy attacks, and now restores magicka every time you successfully heal an ally. Min Spirit. This morph now applies Major Ward and Resolve to the target healed for 5 seconds, regardless of whether it was a light heal or a heavy attack. Love it. That is awesome. Race against time. This ability no longer becomes cheaper as it ranks up. Reduce the snare and immobilization immunity to one second from four seconds. The immunity's duration now increases the ability's rank up, up to a maximum of two seconds, so pretty good. Undaunted changes. Spawn broodlings. The spiders spawned from the synergy and morph synergies now properly scaled dynamically with other offensive stats rather than only weapon damage. <coughs> The spiders will now attack every one, once every 2 seconds rather than 1.5 seconds. 
Increase the damage of Bite to 15% to adhere to our DOT standards. Black Widow's Poison. Reduce the damage of this ability by approximately 58%. Fixed an issue where the spiders took twice as long to attack after using this ability. The Black Widows will now only attempt to apply the ability once per summon. Fixed an issue where multiple players could not only have the ability active on the same target. Alliance War, Assault, Caltrops, Razor Caltrops, Morph. This, this Morph no longer snares enemies hit upon initial hit. Instead, the initial hit deals as much damage as as an instant cast AoE spammable. Approximately 350% damage increase on the initial hit. Adjusted the ability to follow a standardized damage over time rule set. Added a one second delay between the initial hit and the first tick. And increased the damage per tick by approximately 8% to make up for the loss of the first tick. Anti-Calvary increased the duration to 15 seconds from 14 seconds. <sighs> okay, guys. I'm I'm really getting worn out here. Support. Fixed in issue. Uh, guard. Fixed in issue. Numerous issues with this ability in this force. The transfer damage can no longer be mitigated a second time by the transfer target's mitigation or damage reduction. The damage is only mitigated once from the initial target's mitigation and damage reduction. The transfer damage is now correctly attributed to the attacker and will no longer attribute to the initial target. It will no longer scale enormous, enumer, whatever, with the initial target's damage bonus. The transfer damage will now retain the same damage type of the initial attack, instead always being physical damage. Note the oblivion damage still cannot be transferred. Shadow, Befoul, reduce the maximum stat value of this star to 35% from 55%. This was done to allow better balance between healing bonus and reduction within the CP system. Itemization. General item set changes. Fixed an issue where the value of enchantments could decrease if you swapped to a different weapon with a poison equipped. Decreased health enchant oblivion damage reduced the damage to this enchant by 33%. Not even going to say a word. Dubious Cameron Throw, Witch Mother's Brew, reduce the max health and res max resource stamina and magic granted by these drinks by approximately 12%. The recoveries remain unchanged. Artam Takeaway Broth and Clockwork Citrus Filet reduce the max health and resources granted by these foods by approximately 15%. Fixed an issue where weapon enchantments that dealt damage could be dodged. Then when proceed, when procced, from a damage source that couldn't be dodged. Foods and drink that scale based on your level have had their values increase to put them on par with other consumed food. Dubious Cameron Throne and Witch Mother's Potent Root have probably decreased to the original notes to ensure they are as powerful as the other consumed foods. Our Tam Takeaway Broth and Clockwork Citrus for Filet have been properly adjusted to the original notes to ensure that they are as powerful as, the consumed, as other consumed foods. Their max health and max resources values have been reduced, while their resource and recovery values have seen a slight increase. Item sets. Updating wording on numerous sets to clarify the proc conditions, such as triggering from healing allies or requiring a target. Fixed an issue where this, uh, so advancing Yodokai, fixed an issue where this set could not proc off abilities such as rapid strikes added a 0.5 second Internal cooldown for generating a stack, but increase the duration to 6 seconds from 5 seconds. That's going to make Advancing Yodokai a really good set. Asylum's perfection, Perfected Dual Wield. Fixed an issue where this set was not applying its bonus to Blade Cloak and its morphs. Burning Spellweave. Corrected a grammatical error in the, the item set's description. Kaloran's Legacy. Fixed an issue where the certain elemental procs from, had a lower chance of being fired compared to others. Now you will be an equal chance for each elemental proc. Chokethorn. Fixed an issue where this set couldn't proc from healing or meditate or its morphs. Daedric Trickery fixed an issue where the buff did not have an equal chance of proccing. Deadwater's Guile fixed an issue where this set would put an enormous uh, or whatever debuff on the target you hit. What with the set active deadly strike, this set no longer drops in heavy armor boxes in Cyrodiil and will instead drop in medium armor boxes since it is in fact a medium armor set. 
Earthcore, this item set now instantly dispels all negative effects rather than one. The heal granted from this set now only heals the target with the lowest health in the area rather than the six lowest targets in the area. Essence Thief fixed an issue where this the pool would fail to materialize if you began sprinting or roll dodging while it was proccing. Fixed an issue where the targets other than a caster could see the essence pool. Fixed multiple issues where the essence pool would vanish if the caster was stunned, feared, knocked back, silenced, uh, disorientated, charging, staggering, or falling while it was still moving to the target location. The only time you could pr proof, the only time the proof should fail to materialize now is when the character dies or begins to swim. You're already in a pool. You don't need another. Wow. Grace of Gloom. Fixed a tooltip error where the set is stated to it could proc off single target dummies rather than any damage. Griffin's Ferocity. Fixed an issue where this set was fi wasn't firing off the same specific damage, direct damage attacks. Leeching Plate. Fixed an issue where this set's damage could be blocked despite it being an area of effect damage over time. Mechanical Acuity fixes the issue with the set wasn't firing off some specific direct damage attacks. Nicholas Heavy Armor fixed an issue where this set would not proc from Shield Wall or its morphs. Powerful Assault fixed an issue where this item set would trigger multiple times from a single cast of Caltrops or its morphs. Robes of the Hist fixed it. Reduced the healing of this set by 20%. Fixed an issue where this item set was, on, was able to critically strike. Shieldbreaker redesigned this item set so it no longer deals damage when you light attack a target with a shield active. Now it increases your damage to dealt by 6% at all times. This effect is doubled when attacking targets with a damage shield now. Okay. Spell Strategist. Fixed an issue where the item set had reverted the cooldown to 5 seconds rather than 4 seconds. Swarm Mothers adjusted the pull from this set to be line in line with the other abilities. Now this item set will pull targets between 8 meters and 22 meters rather than 5 and 28. Note, this site's minimum range is meant to help prevent situations where you could pull targets who were already in melee range. Fix an issue where this item set would be go on cooldown, attempting to pull, to pull a crowd control immune target. Twilight Remedy fixed an issue where the activating of your own synergy from things such as Haven or of Ursus could proc this set. Vulcan Scoria. The proc from this set item set will now display a ring around the target when it is incoming to improve the clarity of the threat. <sighs> Man, that's a lot of stuff so far. So there has been some Alliance War and PvP adjustments. I don't do that, so I'll leave that to other people to go over. Art and animations, of course, some changes. Crafting and economy changes. Crown store, crown crate changes. Dungeon and group content changes. I'm not going over all this stuff. I'm just showing you what's here. Exploration and itemization changes. Achievements, fishing, housing, general, furnishing homes, miscellaneous. Quest and zones. There's, been a, there's a few of those that are still buggy UI gamepad mode lots of lots of good stuff and then they have a known issues section finally so yeah but that's it for the update 22 base game update changes you guys just saw them and you guys can give your thoughts and opinions on them i'm not going to go through all my thoughts and opinions because this video was long and i don't want to make it any longer so that's it and that's it for the update 22 changes so if you guys like this video you guys know what's coming next hit that like button if you guys want to see more videos by me you can subscribe other than that, i want to thank you all for watching until next time have a wonderful day and this guy might see you in game bye